In my last video, I showed you how to create a mini ESP Home and Web Presence sensor using an ESP32 3 board and the LD2450. Shortly after I published the video, I used an name like Matoverse commenting that the board I was using had a design flow that prevented it from working properly over Wi Fi. Honestly, I was a bit confused. My research indicated Wi Fi issues were limited to boards with small black antennas, not the standard red one commonly seen. So, since my board didn't have the black antenna, I assumed it was fine. On the same thread, I also found that to avoid any type of problem with the C3, it could limit the board's Wi Fi power. So, when I put together my config file, I used the suggested configuration as well as follow C3 specific build tracks to ensure that everything worked as efficient as it could be. And as expected, during the two days of my testing, I never experienced any Wi Fi problems. But I wasn't going to just dismiss what Antoverse commented, since I do take the things that I recommend on my channel very seriously. I know that there is nothing more frustrating than waiting for all the parts to arrive, taking the time to solder everything together, only to discover some weird problem that makes the device useless. So, I that deeper. And yes, it turns out that there are many manufacturers that probably just to save a few cents per unit, make the device a little bit smaller. And this ends up causing interference between components on the board. After this discovery, I went looking for sellers whose customers confirmed were selling boards without the design issue, and updated the links on my website. But you know how it goes with Amazon and AliExpress. Stuff can change from one batch to another. So, you can just go by the photos you see in the publication. An easy way to spot a good port is to check that the distance between these components is at least the size of one pin. If you have a caliber, it should measure about 2.5 mm. Since I already have 5 of those slow ESP32 C3 boards myself, I figured why not try to fix the Wi Fi problem. And that's exactly what I did. And if you're ready, let's go. Okay. First I want to clarify that this is not obligatory. If you got a board with a design flow, you can install the Wi-Fi Fix firmware, available on my website for all the subscribers to the channel. With that firmware, the board should work. Just keep in mind that the Wi-Fi range is being limited in order for it to work properly. So, after some research, I found many solutions that other users have used to improve the Wi-Fi range. For this we need to solder a copper wire to the antenna on the board. For this, I will use the copper wires from an electric cable. First measure 62.5 mm and cut the wire. This is not a random measurement. It's exactly half wavelength for a signal with a frequency of 2.4 GHz. Then I just needed to strip away the plastic isolation. For this I used some wire cutters. Then I soldered it to the right side of the C3 antenna. For this, first I put some solder metal on the tip of the cable and a little bit on the right side of the antenna on the board. This way, it was easier to attach both together. Then, carefully, without touching any of the surrounding components on the board, I attached them together. But since all of this cable wasn't going to fit inside the case, I tried bending in so it could fit inside the case. I did struggle a lot with this part. I should have done it before soldering the wire to the board, but in the end, carefully and with the help of a screwdriver, I managed to make it take a spring-like shape. I know, this is not efficient and there is more than just bending the cable for it to work, but I needed to try to find a solution that can fit inside the case first. Then, since the case had an exact fit for the board, I had to make some adjustments. At this point, you need to know that I go around life with a can-do attitude, and I won't let some minor inconvenience stop me. So I measured where the extra space for the cable was needed inside the case, grabbed the solder iron, and melted it away. I don't recommend you to do it this way, and if you do, be sure to be in a well-ventilated area, since plastic fumes are very toxic. Then I proceeded to close the case, connected the board to the computer, and waited for it to generate some data that I can use to compare versus the signal with only the main antenna. This is the signal level before I made the change, and this is the new signal level now that I soldered the antenna extension. You can clearly see that it definitely wasn't working. I got worse readings than with just the integrated antenna. But I wasn't just going to give up here. And speaking of not giving up on a problem, you know who else is all about helping you bring your ideas to life? Our sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They are not just any PC manufacturer. They are the one-stop online manufacturer with 24-7 customer service. PCBWay provides lightning fast PCB fabrication and assembly, along with offering CNC printing and CNC machining. They provide the easiest way to make your projects come to life. Whether you're a student tinkering in your garage, 
or a seasonal engineer working in the next week thing, PCD Wave has your back. Thank you PCD Wave for sponsoring this video. So I decided to try another fix. For this, again I used a 62.5mm copper wire. This time, before soldering it to the board, with the help of the screwdriver, I bent the tip into a U shape. Then, again, I put some solder iron on the parts that I needed to solder onto the antenna. This time, I needed to solder one part to the right and the other to the left of the antenna. Then, I proceeded to solder it together. With that finished, I needed to put it to the test. But this time, I decided to also try and see if with this modification, the Wi-Fi limit setting I was using wasn't needed anymore. So I compiled the version without it and flashed it onto the board. But when I tried to connect it to my network, it didn't connect at all. Turns out, as Natterger said in the comments, the Wi-Fi modification was the only thing that allowed my board to work at all. And it makes sense, since this is an interference problem, and soldering a bigger antenna is not really an isolation solution. Yet, it was still possible for this modification to help, because it will give the antenna more range without using more power. So I flashed the firmware with the Wi-Fi limit onto the board again, and this time, it connected without a problem. At that moment, I felt that I was onto something. I also felt relieved that it wasn't that I messed up the board while soldering it, because I would have had to redo the test, just to be sure. Then I let the device run for a while to get some data, and after that, the results were... The same as before the modification. But, I still had another test to do. The thing is, minus 30 is already a pretty good quality signal, and since my desk is near to my main router, I needed to test this from a more challenging placement. So I decided to put two ESP32 boards, one with the modification and one without it, to see if there were any differences. And luckily this time, the results showed that the modification did increase the Wi-Fi signal by 10 dB compared to the board without it. But, at this point, this didn't feel like a win, because there is no way the antenna will fit inside the case. So I decided to give the first option another try, since the first time I struggled to give it a well-formed shape, so this time I pre-bent it before soldering it onto the antenna. But, no, this time at least it didn't worsen the Wi-Fi signal, it improved by 1 dB. So, sadly, it was a no-go. Next, I wanted to see how much I would have to modify, if even possible, the case to make the antenna fit inside. This is sad, kind of attitude that I was talking about. Again, I'm not recommending anyone to do it like this. I just needed to know if it was even worth it to modify the case in this way, to make all the components fit inside. And after a lot of struggle, and I mean a lot, it ended up like this. A big hole at the top of the case. But, now that I can measure the extra space needed, I decided to make a quick modification to the housing to add some extra space to fit the board with antenna fix. You can get it from printables. The link is on my website. I did this really quick, since at least I wanted to leave you with a proof of concept. I think the walls on the cutout part I made might be too thin, Maybe someone with more experience in 3D design can make a better job, and I will be happy to share it with you. I'll update my website if that ever happens, but for now, this works great. And according to the data, this modification does improve the Wi-Fi signal range on the ESP32C3 with the design flaw. After a whole day of testing, you can see it on the graphic. Don't mind this fluctuation, that was probably me since I had to move around some things in order to install the drawer you see behind me. And it's not just the extended reach, it's also the stability. You can see that compared to the original data, this graph shows a more stable signal level throughout the day without as many ups and downs as the board without it. So, if you do need to expand the range of one of these words, and buying a new one is not an option, this may be your best shot. Let me know in the comments what you think. And, if you want help with Home Assistant, you can book our new meeting with me. As you can see, I don't take no for an answer that easy when it comes to a problem. I find the solution. So, if you have some configuration or network design problem, automation driving you crazy, I surely can help you find a solution that works for you. If you like my work, please consider becoming a member of Patreon like all these amazing people. If you can become a member, you can always donate whatever you like using the button on our website. 
And if you can do that, don't worry. Just remember to leave a comment on the video and share it with your friends. I truly appreciate all your support. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you on the next video. Bye!